Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call today. Um, I guess first, if you'd like to speak about, if you care to, about the, the uh, mindset of your team in light of the tragic passing of one of your student athletes and anything you'd like to say about last week's game against Ohio State and as you get ready for uh, to play Memphis this Saturday, please. Thank you. It was, uh, it was a tough week last week for our football team. Second time in two years we've had a tragic death of one of our teammates. And uh, it uh, happened on Thursday in a motorcycle accident. And obviously on the mind of all the players and hate to have any experience in that kind of field and but we've got a little experience from going through it last year uh, so uh, it was obviously on the minds of our players going to play Ohio State in Columbus uh, we got uh, beat up pretty good uh, at Columbus uh, physically I thought our guys played hard uh, we got behind we worked our way back into the game but we just didn't have enough uh, enough uh, gas in our gas tank at the end of that game to to pull off a, a win against a team that talented and that well rested after an open date. But I was proud of our guys, how they fought back and clawed back into the game. Uh, got some bumps and bruises, don't have any updates. I know people want to know about updates, but uh, our guys are being evaluated today. A couple of guys, one backup, one starter, in terms of uh, getting ready for this week's opening game of the season in terms of conference play against Memphis. So we're excited about, about that. That's the reason you work all year long is to get ready to play in conference, and and uh, our guys will be ready to play. Take questions for Coach Tuberville, please. Star one on your telephone to join the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. And we'll take a question from Tom Groshen from Cincinnati Inquirer. Morning, Tom. Hey, Coach. Uh, talking about Memphis a little bit, have you gotten to to look at them a little bit now for the past day or so and uh, talk about what they present to you? Yeah, I've been watching them uh, since last night. And, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same team we faced last year. Very A lot of quickness and speed. Quarterback is back. They started him last year as a young guy, first-year starter. And uh, you can tell they're much improved, much more confident than where we're they were last year. More experienced on both sides of the ball. They played very well last week against an Ole Miss team that's uh, highly ranked. And it went down to the last few minutes of the game and playing in Oxford. So two teams coming off two losses to top, uh, top-ranked top teams in the country. Uh, but both teams will be ready to play their conference opener. Uh, again, uh, uh, we've uh, well, we got a lot of work to do, as they've got a lot of work to do in terms of coming off uh, that loss. But, uh, again, being a conference game, I think both teams will give a great effort, and it should be a heck of a ball game. Are they, uh, geographically now, they're the closest team to you in the league. Uh, it's, is, that, is there any sensible rivalry, or is that stretching it at this point? Well, it's probably stretching it a little bit just because it's still a long ways. It's, uh, I'd say it's probably eight or nine hour drive for fans to drive that distance. And I, and I, I equate a, a rivalry being a, a situation where your fans can easily access the game. But, uh, you know, this conference is spread out all over the country from north to south. So uh, um, you won't have a lot of close relationships with with teams, but if we, I guess if we do have one, that's probably our closest. Uh, could you one more? Thing, could you comment a little bit about Gunnar Keel? Just uh, the 14 touchdown passes in three games, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just historically, have you had anything like this in your own experience? Uh, realizing that he's very early into his career. No, you know he's he's a mature guy, first starter, because he's he's been out of school. What two years? So this is just going into his third year of being out of high school. He's had a chance to take a lot of reps with a lot of the players from Notre Dame, and then of course a lot of reps here over the last year, year and a half. Uh, he's gotten off to a good start. A lot of it's because you know our, our protection's been. He's only been sacked three times. He had to hurry five passes last week against the the best defensive line that we'll face all year long in terms of Ohio State. Uh, but again, he was only sacked once. He gets the ball out quick. And we do have receivers. We can. I mean, it's, it, you can't can't deny that we've got guys that can run. We've got good speed. We've got height. We can stretch the field. And you know, our our football game's going deep. And uh, you know, if you play us one on one, 
and which a lot of people have been doing. They've paid the price for it. So we'll, we we enjoy the passing game. Uh, our running game is getting a little bit better. It wasn't as good last week as we would have hoped it. But, again, if we just keep our receivers healthy, which we have, and and keep protecting, uh, our protection has even gotten better. Even in that game of the day, it was probably better than the other two games. So we're excited about our offense. We've got to get a defense to go along with it. We haven't played defense all year long. So we'll make some adjustments this week, try to get some more guys on the field and, and try to work on some depth. And we'll take our next question from Phil Stuckerberg from Memphis Commercial Appeal. Hey, Tommy, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty hey, good. Sticking, sticking on that receivers thing, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the early season production you've gotten from uh, Chris Moore and just kind of what's made him so dangerous. Well, the only uh, response to Chris I'd had last week, and Chris only practiced a, a day and a half last week. He had a, had a sore muscle, and we kind of held him out. And, I asked a uh, receiver coach if he was ready to go on Friday and said, Coach, he's running good. And, and uh, wow, what, what three, three receivers. Actually, had four TDs uh, and one call back, and uh, they call us receiver, uh, illegal receiver downfield, which uh, that play, you always have a few down to a certain degree. But, you know, uh, Big Ten called it on us, which was fine. You know, uh, we uh, uh, – Chris is an experienced receiver. He had a – very good year last year. This year we have speed on both sides of the field, at wideouts and height, and, I, and it's just hard to double guys. It's, you know, you end up getting a lot of single coverage, and and uh, you know it's it, it's fun to watch these guys run routes. And all of our routes are, are concept routes where where you have somebody underneath, somebody deep, and uh, you know we we take advantage of what they give us, and so. Uh, it's been fun to coach Chris. You know, I, I, I can't remember Chris ever saying a word. He never says a word. He's always quiet. He works hard in practice. And the good thing is we have a lot of um, competition in practice for who's, who the starter's going to be because you look at Mikhail McKay and Johnny Holton and, and Chris, and, and then you've got guys behind them. It's, uh, it's fun to watch them in practice. I, you know, it kind of reminds me back of my, my days at Miami when we had guys that could stretch the field and, go deep and catch short passes and make a five-yard catch into a 50-yard run, you know, after a catch. So it's been fun to watch that, and, and most, most I guess, all these guys are, are juniors, so they'll all be back next year. So it's going to be fun to watch them get better and better. So Chris is someone, like you said, like some of the guys at Miami, he can, he can take a short reception and turn it into a big play. Who does it remind you of? Yeah, I mean, does it remind yeah. you of anyone at Miami? Yeah, I, you know, I'd say Michael Irving uh, is one that, uh, and I'm not saying he's good as Michael Irving or any of them are, but Michael Irving was a was a great receiver in college and pro. But they love to run routes, and and they stay after practice. They throw all summer. And that's what's really helped Gunner become a better player because these guys won't let Gunner go in, you know, that, hey, let's go throw. And uh, uh, I, I, I think – Obviously, it, you've got to get the ball to him, but it's helped that he's worked really <clears throat> hard in the off season throwing to all these guys. Uh, again, we've got guys on the inside that they're just as productive when you've got a Shaq Washington that caught 80 passes last year, and then uh, uh, look at the you know the other guys around them. So it, it's it's fun to know you can go into a game. We're down 30 to seven, and you look up and right before half it's 30 to 21, and then. It's 38 to 28, and we've got the ball driving down the score again, and we get a for some reason got an offensive pass interference call when when it could easily and probably should have gone the other way. So, uh, you know, we can score, and we we can score from anywhere at any time. And so, it, it when you play a team like Ohio State at their place, 108,000 people, and you don't get rattled, means you got some confidence in what you're doing. So, uh, again, it all goes back to the entire offense, the line, the the backs block well, and uh, and getting the ball deep. And uh, Eddie Grand, the offensive coordinator, has done a good job and and uh, of of recognizing what people do and helping Gunner get the ball to them. Thanks so much. Thanks. Mm-hmm. And we have time for one more for Coach Tuberville, please. 
We'll take our next question from Rob Fisher from Sports 56 Memphis. Coach, you were talking about uh, Memphis being similar to, to what you saw last year defensively. They were terrific last year, and they started off really well defensively again this season. What, what challenges do they present on that side of the ball? Well, you know, number one, experience. You know, they've got a lot of guys back, and they're playing hard, and they know more what they're doing. It's like anything. You know, it's, the, these guys grow up, and and uh, they come more comfortable in what they're doing and how to react and how to handle success and uh, how to handle, you know, something bad going wrong. Sometimes you can't you can't help it, you know, but you just play hard, and, and they're playing faster. Their team's playing a lot faster. Uh, just watching them against Ole Miss, they, they, I guess, what, four turnovers they created? And uh, and that's a sign of a good football team creating turnovers. Uh, you can't beat teams like Ole Miss or Ohio State unless you force them to turn the ball over, uh, you, and especially on the road. And uh, they had a much better chance than we did. Uh, we we only got one turnover, and and uh, and uh, they made uh, they made the quarterback look pretty pretty rough down at Ole Miss last week. So just the experience uh, of being out there, guys, knowing playing against. Teams before they they played against us last year. They know our strengths and weaknesses of some of the players, and so that's a carryover you get. Coach, we thank you for your time this week. Look forward thank to talking to you again next Monday. All right.